Welcome to our, our Tuesday edition. It's every Tuesday, acrepro.com, buy, sell. I want to thank the good folks, Kyle Spray and company at acrepro.com. You can visit them at acrepro.com, 765-775-6502. But also, uh, if you're doing a 1031 exchange or buying or selling uh, uh, real estate in the agriculture area, make sure you talk to Kyle and the guys at Acrepro. All right, Tom. Big week for Purdue. Ryan Walters has already said it's 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 uh, uh, almost playoff mode for the Boilermakers, and I think that's the clearest thing. That Purdue has no margin for error. Yes, uh, I know the Boilermakers have five games left, but uh, Michigan is one of those games they've got to win. Got to win four. Crazy uh, that Iowa would uh, though they got Iowa got, for lack of a better term, met a pose to say the least. But Minnesota, I mean, everything changes week to week in this deal. So I, I, let's go with the first thing we're going to talk about, and that is stopping the run from the quarterback. Purdue is uh, uh, going to be faced with another running quarterback in Heinrich, Heinrich Harburg. Nebraska's changed from where they wanted to be early in the season. Uh, it's critical that Purdue holds uh, North or well, Nebraska's run game under 100 yards, one would think. But are you buying or selling that? You know, he's had a good, really good last two games, Harburg has, for the for the Cornhuskers. Uh, first, say, are you buying it? They'll hold them under, under 80 yards and uh, the importance of that heading into Saturday's game for Purdue. I guess I'm going to sell that. I, I think he's going to have over 80 yards rushing. May have 100. Um, I think this offense has, has it figured out. They know what they have to do. Um, he's the best rushing quarterback in the Big Ten. He's sort of been a revelation. Big kid, 6'5", 215, faster than you think, I'm told as well. Very good yeah. at the, the RPO. So I think he's going to get his yards. Now, the one caveat, Alan, is that Nebraska offensive line is really beat up. They, they've lost two starters to injury last week. So so that that's something to be mindful of. Um uh, as far as watching that Nebraska ground game. But it sounds like the replacements are not total greenhorn, so they should be okay up front. And, again, I think when it's all said and done, Alan, I think what Heinrich's going to have is uh, get his yards and be one of uh, what it's been a handful of quarterbacks that have had a lot of success running the football in Purdue this year, going back to Garrett Schrader, you know, um, uh, Luke Altmaier as well. Uh, uh, some of these quarterbacks have really confounded Purdue when it comes to running the football. And Purdue's going to have to find a way, uh, uh, you know, in terms of being able to to uh, deal with that. You know, one would think if they're going to keep this keep this game uh, within reach, they're talking about a very cool day, uh, forty two degrees right now. They're saying and and uh, possible rain, just what you need, Tom. I guess you'll mm -hmm. be inside, so maybe you'll be all right. But but. Uh, that has nothing to do with anything. It's, it's October football weather. I get it. Late October football yeah. weather. Purdue has also, Devin Mockaby has started to show his stripes as, as a guy that's uh, what we thought he was after some fumbling issues from the front end. Uh, we've already talked last week about his ability to maybe make a run at 1,000 yards. He's got a long way to go. But Nebraska, outside of the Michigan game, has been really pretty good defensively. Um I'm going to say, are you buying or selling Purdue getting more than 125 yards rushing as a team? Now, Tyrone Tracy, I don't know if there's been any update there of what his status is and whether he'll get back in the game. But uh, are you buying or selling the Boilermakers as a team will rush for over 125 yards against Nebraska? Wow. I'm going to – I guess I'm going to sell that, Alan. You know, Nebraska is the number one rush defense in the Big Ten. And you talked about Michigan being really the only team that's had success on the ground – against Nebraska this year. That, that, that's the best part of this, this Husker team, Alan, is the defense. Yeah. Um, Matt Rule hired uh, uh, Tony White to run the defense. Tony White was the defensive coordinator at Syracuse last year, the team that beat Purdue up there in the in the old carrier dome. And he, he's brought that same defense to Lincoln, Alan, a 3-3-5. And the Husker defense has really adapted to that scheme, excelled against the run. I think they're number one in the Big Ten against the run. See, the yards are going to be hard to come by. Uh, it may be close, Allen. Um, uh, the strength of this Purdue offense may be his ability to run the football. Uh, I think Tyrone Tracy will be back, it sounds like. You know, he had that groin pole. He suffered going into the Iowa game. Only played a half there. Didn't play against Ohio State, but 
expect him to be back. So that'd get pretty a nice two headed monster there, but still it's going to be a pretty big uphill climb. I think for Purdue to get over 125 yards, 125 yards rushing against this Nebraska defense. It's going to be, uh, uh, I think a necessity of Purdue's, you know, maybe another low scoring game, <laughs> yeah, depending on how, how the, how this one plays out. Uh, I don't even know. Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm the, the over under is is not very high for this one as well. So the Boilermakers started out as a uh, also that line has has gone yeah. I think a little bit more Nebraska's way. But uh, again, you look at you look at also Purdue and how the Boilermakers want to attack, uh, and maybe because the way that Nebraska plays defensively and the way it uh, can stop the run, are you buying or selling? Purdue will throw the ball. 60% of the time against uh, Nebraska. And boy, I want to get you on a bye today. You're, you're over two on sales. Mm-hmm. What do you what do you think? <laughs> I'm gonna buy that one. I think they will uh I think they will uh, have some success on the football just because they're gonna have to, I think. Yeah. And uh, I guess good news for Purdue is the fact that uh you know Ryan Walter says Hudson Card's healthy, you know. He got yeah. banged up going way back to September 30th against Illinois. Uh, fought to a lot of discomfort at Iowa. Uh, was a little bit better against Ohio State a couple of weeks ago, and now he's had a, well, upwards of you know, almost two weeks off here. So uh, I asked Ryan about uh, Hudson yesterday. He said he's good to go, feeling feeling good. So uh, he's going to need to be good, obviously, to go into that environment and to beat a, a, a Nebraska team that's won four out of its last five games. It's feeling good. Want to get to bowl eligibility? They got four wins. Alan, can you believe Nebraska has not been to a bowl? I think since 2016. It's, yeah. it's unbelievable. So they think this is a game they can win. The odds makers think it's a game they can win. They're about a three point favorite. And again, I, I'm buying that. I, I think Hudson Card's going to throw throw well and have to throw often. And and Purdue's going to need some big plays. Alan, uh, they got to get some big plays in this pass game. They're not going to nickel and dime their way down the field. So. Uh, we'll see if Hudson and, and that whiteout core can can maybe uh, generate some big plays. All right, here's the operative question now. <laughs> I don't know. After last week, and of course, uh, Minnesota's shocking win, to me, shocking and maybe disputed. It's definitely disputed. Who are you buying yeah, oh, to win the Big Ten West? Is it Wisconsin? Uh could Nebraska, Nebraska beats Purdue on Saturday and they can put themselves back in the hunt, uh, one would think. Are you still buying, I'm going to say, are you buying Wisconsin? Who's Wisconsin's got Ohio State Saturday. Uh, they've got Nebraska uh, as well down the stretch. Uh, this is a team, uh, one would think, that uh, is still the favorite. But are you, in fact, uh, I mean, Nebraska has a chance to and they all, obviously Wisconsin's got to go to Minnesota too. Um, still got a chance, uh, you know, to be in the picture if they could beat beat Wisconsin on November 18th and and somehow win enough games down the stretch. But are you buying the Badgers for the to be the Big Ten representative in Indianapolis as as things sit? I am buying the Badgers. I was really impressed last week. You know, they they lost their quarterback Tanner Mordecai got hurt. They had to bring yeah. in their, their backup, a uh, kid named Locke. We did very well, Alan. Uh, they were losing twenty-one to seven going into the fourth quarter. Scored eighteen right. points and got out of that thing with with a, with a win. And that's the kind of seminal moment that that teams that end up having really good seasons need to to experience. And and uh, boy, that that was a game where the Badgers looked dead in the water. And for them to pull that out and and to get the performance from their backup quarterback like that, <clears throat> I'm not sure the long term prognosis for Tanner Mordecai, but. Locke's got to play for any extended stretch. It looks like he can certainly get the job done. Yeah, you know, Ohio State this weekend is obviously an uphill climb, but after that, Alan, at Indiana, Northwestern, Nebraska at home, at Minnesota. I mean, Wisconsin could win out. I just think they're more complete, they're probably the most complete team in the Big Ten West, more complete than Nebraska and Iowa. <clears throat> um, offensively, Nebraska and Iowa are so limited, but this Badger team's got some good receivers. Great running back in Braylon Allen as well, and always a good line. So I, I'm buying Wisconsin as the favorite in, in, in the Big Ten West, and I think they're going to take home what will be the very last Big Ten West banner ever. Yeah, I, I think you're right on that one. I, I I know it's silly talk to throw Nebraska into the mix. However, it's all in front of Nebraska. Obviously, the Cornhuskers have Purdue this week, and 
They go to Michigan State, not very good. They have Maryland at home. They go to Wisconsin and they go to Iowa. So, or, excuse me, they go to Wisconsin and have Iowa at home on that on that Black Friday game yeah. uh, in at the end of November. I don't think I, I'm with you. I just don't think Nebraska is ready um, to go. As many many troubles as that uh, that uh, Matt Rule has inherited, and though I think he's turning some things around there. Obviously, their last two wins <laughs> are impressive enough um, yeah. to get you know the one uh, that uh, you have to get their attention. But I'm with you on that standpoint. I think it's going to be Wisconsin in the in the Big Ten championship. All right, I'm going to go back now. You saw Ohio State. Uh, I know you probably did other things. You did gardening and everything this past oh, yeah. weekend. You didn't watch any college football, but you took care of your took care of your property. But uh, this is uh, you saw Ohio State take care of Penn State. Obviously, Penn State's yeah. got to go. Uh, they have Michigan at home, mm -hmm. uh, and, and of course, Ohio State and Michigan. Who are you buying? I'm going to say, are you buying Ohio State for that East Division? Can they go into can they go into uh, – because it's ultimately still, even if even if Penn State beats Michigan, uh -huh. uh, the Buckeyes are going to have to go to Michigan and win it still seems. Nothing really change, changes on that front. I don't know how all the tie-breaking scenarios will play out. But are you buying Ohio State as a favorite in the, in the East Division? I guess when it comes down to it, Alan, I'm going to sell that. Uh, I, th I think Michigan's still going to end up winning this thing. Um they're, they're the better team on both sides of the ball than Ohio State. I'm still not sold on that Buckeye offense, Allen. Um, quarterback Kyle McCord's okay, but he's not J.J. McCarthy. Um, yeah, I, I just think that Michigan is much more explosive offensively, and the defenses are pretty much a wash. They're both excellent. Uh, yeah. And then you kind of got the intangible X factor, right? Uh, home field for, for Michigan. One of the last two of, of, of these great clashes of the game. And then, of course, you have all the the, the specter of this, uh, you know, spy yeah, game you know, on the collegiate level. I mean, maybe this is something where it causes Michigan to circle its wagons, you know, Alan? Maybe instead of it being a distraction, you know, inside their, their building, they, they say, hey, man, let's prove everybody wrong. And this becomes a real a motivating factor that they, again, can rally around and use as motivation down the stretch. It's a story that's gaining momentum. It's going to be a big story here, obviously, <clears throat> for a couple of weeks, maybe throughout the rest of the year, given Michigan's status as a national championship contender. It's always going to be out there, Alan. I'm not sure if anything's going to come of it, Alan. Even if they find him guilty, what are they going to do, Alan? They're, yeah. they're, they're not going to kick him out of the Big Ten and not let him play in the playoff. That's my, that's, my, that's my point. If they get caught, nothing's going to happen to them. The only thing they're going to lose is damage to their credibility, I guess. And they're, they're going to have that cloud of taint around them, I guess. So there's something there, but that, there's nothing tangible. There's no tangible penalty, I think, uh, they're going to suffer that's going to impact their ability to win the Big Ten and win the national championship. So having said all that, I think this is still Michigan's ball of wax to win, and and they, they should be considered the favorite. Yeah, I think playing at home in November uh... – going to be hard to beat though Ohio State was impressive against Penn State I thought that they you know that game was obviously that score was closer than the way that the game really was uh, uh, Ohio State uh, was able to dominate but question about that offense but Ohio State also still playing Trevon Henderson still not back uh, whether yeah. that's going to going to change their situation a little bit uh we'll see all right last question and somewhat facetious in nature uh weather may be an issue it always can be this time of year at least it's going to be cool mm -hmm. will are you buying or selling that Purdue's going to make a field goal this week, and I'm just, uh, <laughs> that's well, a good Ben one. Freehill. Good ben Freehill will, and whether he's back, I know you've reported and written about that as well. But will <laughs> Purdue make a field goal? And if not, will it be Caleb Crockover? Who will it be? But I'm going to I'm going to start with plus or minus. Will they make a field goal this weekend? I'm going to say I'm I'm going to sell that. I'm going to say they're not going to make a field goal. Um, yeah, we'll see. I asked Coach Walters about Freehill. It sounds like you know if he's healthy, he's he's going to. He's going to be the guy. He's missed four games this year. But, Allen, it's not like he hasn't had his issues too, right? Yeah, no question. He wasn't, he wasn't exactly Jan Stenrud or, or uh, George Blanda or Lou Groza. Here's <laughs> some real dated references for you. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> I just think it's been uh, it's been a muddled mess, to use as kind of words as I can. They're 3-9 and nine on the season, Allen. Yeah, the worst percentage in the Big Ten, 33%. I, even I can do that math. 
They've uh, missed two extra points. No Big Ten team has missed more. I don't need to chronicle the struggles. Fans realize the issues produce that kick and field goals. And I was thinking the other day, talking to some people, you know, they got four games they got to win out of five down the stretch, Alan. You got to think if, if they're going to do this, it's going to be at least one of those games, maybe two. You have to hit, probably maybe have to hit a, hit a big kick to win. Yeah. A lot of times win these close games against even the master opponents. So that's something Purdue's got to get figured out. So maybe, maybe Freehill can get everything straightened out here if, if he kicks on Saturday. As expected, I think he's going to make the trip. Um, and who knows if they'll, if they'll give Macius another chance. I don't know how you want to handle that, Alan. He had a, just a horrific afternoon against the Buckeyes, missing those three kicks. You wonder where his mind is. One school of thought is throw him back out there, man. You know, there's you don't want to sit there and let your head play with you. Just throw somebody back in the pool and make them try to swim again. So who knows if they may, maybe they will give him another shot. And then you talk about Caleb Crockover. The only one of the three who has not attempted a field goal this year has kicked two extra points. Doesn't have a big leg, Allen, but from all reports are, the kid's pretty accurate, 40 yards on in. Maybe he could be like a Mitchell Finneran type of a kicker who's, again, not a big boomer, but very accurate. And, and again, from those kicks you want to be able to make from 40 yards on in. So it's a soap opera that no coach wants to see play out here. The struggles in special teams as far as field goal kicking goes. And uh, I think in the end, Purdue's going to try to avoid having to send his kicker out there, uh, just given what's gone on. Again, if the conditions are poor, Allen, and, and down in distance isn't too far, maybe Purdue opts to try to go for a, for some fourth downs here uh, when, when it's in Nebraska territory instead of opting for the field goal. This is very, for Purdue fans, very familiar territory. Look at 2012, Danny Hope. Uh, made a run to a bowl game, having to win three, kind of also ran games in mm. and to get to the bowl. 2017, Jeff Brom had to win all those games down the stretch. 2018, they had to win the games down the stretch. They made field goals in 2012 to get there at the mm. buzzer to beat Iowa. Uh, was it Paul Griggs? And I think 2018, uh, they hit a field goal, and I'm drawing a complete bank on the Spencer. Oh, yeah, Spencer, Spencer Evans. Spencer Evans. Spencer Evans kicked the game winner against Iowa in 18, and that yeah. Purdue had to have, or it would not have gone to a bowl. I think your analysis is right. Uh, and and Purdue's had that schedule when the Northwestern and Indiana have been at the end of your schedule. You're always going to have a little bit of an easier road. Not always, but it has been that way of late. So that's an interesting dynamic. I'm with you 100%. Uh, I don't know if I'm buying or selling anything, but they're going to have to. I think it is going to come down to if you're going to make a run at uh, getting to – even if you're making a run at getting to five wins here, you're going to have a game where a yeah. field goal is going to come down and make the to, at the end for Purdue. So real uh, quick, Alan, real see. Yes, sir. You have the over-under is 39 and a half. Okay, I'm going to say what. Uh, all right, give us your give us your guru. Are you buying? Are you buying under? I'm buying that. Right? I'm buying that. I, I think the first team to 24 wins this game. I think points are going to be hard to come by. The weather is going to be a factor, and uh, the offense. Neither offense is that that I guess overly dynamic, and especially for Purdue going against that defense. So I, yeah, I'm buying the notion over under under 39 and a half for sure. I think between these two teams. All right, well said, and uh, always an entertaining discussion uh, for that. Uh, we won't do the over-under of how many people will be watching Purdue ba- trying to watch Purdue basketball <laughs> on, on yeah. live stream while Purdue playing Arizona, or excuse me, Arkansas, the exhibition yeah. game, well, well, pretty much in the second half of this football game, if my timing is correct. Uh, but FS1, Purdue, Nebraska, 3.30 kick. You've got night football in Michigan next week. I know that yep. delights the living heck out of you from that standpoint, but you, that's going to be good from that standpoint. Uh, uh, the Boilermakers will be getting some uh, attention, at least, uh, here in the next couple of weeks. All right, Tom, thanks so much. I want to thank Kyle Spray and the good folks at AcrePro.com. Remember that number, 765-775-6502, AcrePro.com. We'll be back next week and buying or selling the biggest upset in college football when Purdue yeah. goes up to Michigan and wins. You heard it here first. There you go. Uh, maybe not, but you never know. All right, guys. Uh, Tom, thanks so much, and we'll see you next week. We'll see you before then, but uh, we appreciate uh, your expertise on acrepro.com. Buy, sell.